Hey everybody and welcome to today's topic. Does fiber cause type 1 diabetes? According to this study, maybe. So this study was uh, published in JAMA Pediatrics. Let me make this bigger. In 2019. And what they did is they followed thousands of children for up to six years from two um, hospitals in Finland. And they looked at their consumption of cereal, gluten, and dietary fiber, and whether or not they developed eyelid autoimmunity or type 1 diabetes. Eyelid autoimmunity is when your own immune system starts to destroy the eyelid cells or the beta cells of the pancreas. So those are the cells that release insulin. And in type 1 diabetes, eyelid autoimmunity eventually um, leads to type 1 diabetes by the complete destruction of the pancreatic beta cells or the eyelid cells of the pancreas. So you no longer have the ability to pump out insulin from your, from your pancreas. So what they did is they surveyed all of these people. It is definitely an association, not, um, not a randomized control trial, but still it was done over a very long period of time. And what it showed here is that a high intake of oats, gluten-containing cereals, gluten and dietary fiber was associated with an increased risk of eyelid autoimmunity. And they go on to say that all of those things, the fiber, the cereal, the gluten, they were all associated with significant increases in the risk of eyelid autoimmunity and type 1 diabetes in those that already carry the genes that are associated with type 1 diabetes. So those that are genetically susceptible to type 1 diabetes. Um, they were all children and they were studied for up to six years. And this is a direct quote from the study. The authors were surprised by these results. They said that we also observed that a high intake of oats and fiber was associated with an increased risk of eyelid autoimmunity, which is somewhat surprising given their various presumed beneficial health effects. That's right. We presume they're healthy for us, unfortunately. And uh, they showed that just a 10 gram increase in oats con consumption, which corresponds to five tablespoons of oatmeal per day, just that small increase in consumption was associated with a 19% higher risk of eyelid autoimmunity. And then they were trying to explain how that could be. And again, this is another quote from the study. If the associations are confirmed, it's important to consider whether the observed associations can be explained by gluten or the fiber or other factors. So if, it, if it's the gluten, then it could be that gluten leads to inflammation and intestinal permeability. And I'm sure that, that that's a factor. Um, there's plenty of studies showing how when you eat gluten, you release a protein in your gut called zonulin. And zonulin literally pries open the uh, tight junctions that normally would keep your gut cells tight and close to one another. So it literally pries open those tight junctions. So now your gut cells or enterocytes have gaps in that within them, in between them. And so um, now you have leaky gut or intestinal permeability, whereby Bacteria and slightly larger maldigested food particles can now cross over from the lumen of your intestine or from inside your gut into your blood where it has no business being. And now your immune system freaks out. It doesn't, it's not used to seeing those large molecules of food and it's not used to seeing bacteria from your gut in your blood. And so this is how autoimmunity begins. So I'm sure that that's playing a role. Another way that they're trying to explain why that could be is because fiber could potentially act by modifying your gut microbiota, meaning that um, fiber could lead to overgrowth of certain bacteria in our gut that could lead to the type 1 diabetes. And I've already covered another study that showed how fiber leads to an increase in a certain bacterial strain that um, increases uh, risk of cancer. And so I'm going to um, list that, that video in the description bo box below. I'm sorry, um, it increased the risk of arthritis, not cancer. Um, so I, I'm gonna post that link um, below so you can look at the link between fiber and arthritis, um, which is another autoimmune disease. And then they're also trying to explain it finally by 
alpha amylase trypsin inhibitors because we know that when you eat plant foods, they have plant toxins in them. And those, those digestive enzyme inhibitors are there to prevent you, the animal, the predator, from being able to um, profit from the nutrients found in that plant. So the plant doesn't want to be eaten and it most certainly doesn't want you to access its nutrients. So that could also be a mechanism advanced glycation and products whereby you have um, increased sugar or glucose in your blood, which then attaches to all sorts of molecules in your body, like collagen that leads to wrinkles or um, the membrane of your cells, your DNA. I mean, all kinds of um, organelles and structures in your body. And, um, and that also damages you internally and speeds up the aging process. And that comes, that comes from just eating carbs, really. And it doesn't only have to be cereal. All kinds of carbs can do that. And then cereal mycobiota and toxins, so mold and toxins and heavy metals and remnants of pesticides and fertilizer, fertilizers all could also be potential mechanisms. So that's it. This is the Carnivore Calorie Bible. I've updated it a little bit. I've seen that you're interested in learning the, about the amounts of calories in different carnivore-friendly foods. Um, this is my Instagram if you would like to connect. And this is my website, drsarahzaldivar.com. If also you want to check out my coaching packages. And the reference for the study is here. And it is also linked in the description box below. I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed it, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. It really helps my channel and I will see you in the next one.